Hello, it's the beginning of June and what I've been doing for the last few days is sorting out the greenhouses. I've been potting up my aubergines, my chilies, my okra, uh, what else? Have, oh, my tomatoes, obviously. Oh, and my melons and some cucumbers as well. So all of those I'm growing in the greenhouse and I am putting some tomatoes outside because I've run out of room in here and I seem to sow so many this year. I've got more than I know what to do with, but I will find space for them somewhere. I don't quite know where yet, but I will find space for them somewhere because I don't like to throw them away. If they're really tiny and they've not done anything, then I have to say goodbye to them. But, you know, if they're looking good, uh, then... I, I, don't know anybody particularly well around here to know if they want some anyway so but I will find space for them so that's what I've been doing now because it is the beginning of June and down in the southeast of the UK all frost has gone in this area we've got no worry of having anything like that anymore so all the tender crops can go out so you can plant out your what I will also be doing today is putting out my beans and I will be putting out my courgettes and pumpkins and all those bits and pieces and sweet corn and I think that's most probably about it. So I will show you each of those but as I say I've potted up everything apart from a few things that I'm going to show you. Now I keep my most of my tomatoes, some of my tomatoes are outside but most of my tomatoes I keep in the greenhouse. I used to find that when I was on the allotment that blight used to go round the allotment site and if one person got it then the whole site got it. So I always used to grow my uh, tomatoes in the greenhouse and I'm just about getting out of the habit of it. This is the first year I think, oh no no I did grow some outside last year and they did very well but because I'm here on my own it should be okay. So if you are growing yours in the greenhouse, what I'm using is a three litre pot. I wouldn't use anything smaller than this. If you've got stuff that's bigger, pots that are bigger, then use those. But I can fit two of these in the little black trays that go in my staging units. So they fit together really well, which is why I use uh, three litre pots. Now here is one of my tomatoes. I have no idea what variety that is. I can't remember. I've got lots of different varieties. I think it was eight different varieties. They're all mixed up but that doesn't matter. I don't mind. So they're all looking really good. Some are a little bit shorter, some are a little bit taller but that's a really good size. They've, I should have done these about a week or so ago but I was so busy I just didn't have time. So now I've got time and I'm doing them all. So let me show you how I'm going to transfer for this tomato in this little pot here into a big tomato in, uh, sorry, a, into this big pot and how I'm going to secure it to the staging so it doesn't fall over. In this box, I've just got some multi-purpose compost. All I'm going to do is fill this pot nearly to the top with multi-purpose compost. I'm going to make a nice hole in it, in the compost, because that is where I'm going to put my tomato. Now, to get your tomato out, you just need to very carefully secure it with two fingers, turn it upside down, squeeze its bottom. Now we can see that there's lots of lovely roots here. So if you do end up ripping some of them off, don't worry. So hopefully you can see there's loads of roots in there and it's really doing ever so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right down to the bottom as far as I can. Now tomatoes need to be planted deep, as deep as you can get them. Um, if you're planting them outside, then what I would suggest you've got, if you can see, you've got the little baby leaves here and if you're planting them outside, you can plant them, these next true leaves, underneath the ground as well. Okay, in a pot, obviously, it depends how deep the pot is. So I'm gonna push that right down, and then I'm just gonna fill the rest of the space round 
and then just firm it down so the pot is now full right to the top with compost and it should look just like that. I've put my pot in my tray as you can hopefully you can see that two fit in there just perfectly. I've got a stick here and I think this is about a four footer and I'm just going to push it down about an inch away from the stem. Now obviously because it's in a pot it's not particularly secure here so what I do is I get a little bit of string and I attach it to my frame to the staging and it seems to hold it really really well because the staging is really firm i'm going to do it most probably slightly out of your sight line let me just tip the camera up so that hopefully you'll be able to see Ooh. can you see that there I've just attached it just with a bit of string up to the top there. There is a little bit of give in it, but that's absolutely fine. What I will also do is I will then get another piece of string and I will attach the plant very loosely to the stick. And this way it will grow up. Now they are fairly close together, but they're in the greenhouse and they should be all right. So that's now all my tomatoes done. Let me show you the uh, cucumbers. Behind me here, hopefully you can see, are my cucumbers. I've got two there. Oh, let me scooch over, this could be painful. Oh, dear me, getting too old for this. Uh, there's a couple there and then there's a couple here. I've got these two here are long green light coloured ones from Spain and the other four are exactly the same. They're a variety called Louisa. Now again I have put a stick in so that they can climb up and again I have attached the stick to the frame. The sticks for these ones are slightly longer because it's it, they're actually in the bit of the roof that does this so I've got longer sticks because they'll climb up a little bit further anyway. So I will plant the, I've got one um, cucumber left to do and again I will I've got the same size pot I've got a three litre pot I will put some multi-purpose compost in there I will dig a little hole for it and put it in and push it down so it's just a little uh, deeper in the its new pot than it was in its smaller pot now once you've done all of these just make sure that you then water them I would suggest watering from the bottom because they're in trays I will put water in the trays I will let the trays um, I sorry I will let the compost in the pots absorb and suck up the water and that way the roots will be encouraged to grow down and fill out the pot. So that's what I'll do. These tomatoes, they're all cordon ones, so they're all ones that grow really tall, so they will need side shooting, but I will come across that. None of that's actually happened at the moment, but I expect in the middle of June, then we will um, be into side shooting, so I will uh, show you that but just keep watering them. Make sure, what I do with these is I half fill the tray with water, let all of that disappear, and then fill, fill it up again. They don't like to be you know, soggy all the time, so don't overwater them especially cucumbers, they don't like to be overwatered. So let that water go and then put some more in. So that way they're allowed to sort of dry out just a little bit down the bottom. So um, yes, just keep an eye on them. Once the flowers start to appear, then you can start feeding. Okay, so that's the tomatoes and the cucumbers. Let's go in the other greenhouse and I will show you the chilies and the aubergines. In here I have got my melons. I've planted those in exactly the same way as I did the cucumbers. So put the compost in, make a little hole, put them down a little deeper than they were in their small pot and then just fill up around. Over here I have got my okra. Now I've got more than one plant in each pot 
because when I sewed them, I think I sewed about five per pot. Now, if you do end up with, like I have, with more than one that germinated per pot, which you should have, then don't separate them because they don't like to be separated. So what I have done is I have just put them all in together. Now these don't like to be planted deep, they need to go at the same height in this new compost, the same height that they were in their smaller pot, so just be aware of that. Here I've got one of my chilies. This is a rainbow pepper, but whether you've got sweet or whether you've got hot chilies, or sweet peppers, they all need to go in exactly the same way. Now, aubergines plant those in the same way that I do these. Both of these don't like to be sown deep, so whatever level they are in this little pot here is the same level that they need to go in their bigger pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, this is a three litre pot, all these plants are in three litre pots, is I'm just gonna fill it up with multi-purpose compost. Okay, I will, as you can see there, I will make a little hole, not particularly deep, but just deep enough for the pot to go in. Just remove, I'll put the label back. And again, carefully take out the plant by securing it with two fingers. And you can see that there's a lovely selection of roots there. So we will pop this into the pot and I have put it at roughly the same depth as it was in the pot. Just fill round, firm it in and then put the label back. Do your aubergines in exactly the same way and I will also, sometimes you have to um, sort of add a stick to help secure them, which I do tend to do because they can get quite tall. So I've attached a stick exactly the same way as I did to the tomatoes. And I've attached the stick to the frame and I will, if it needs it, I will put a little bit of string, just very loosely, never do it too tightly, because remember the stem will get fatter and if you do the, the, the string too tightly, it will cut into the stem. So it's just a guide, it just stops it from falling over. So that is the melons, the okra, the chilies, the peppers, and the aubergines. So that is everything done in the greenhouse. Now let's go outside and see what I need to plant out there. Out in garden now, and I've been putting in my beans. I've been putting in my runner beans, my French beans. I've put all the climbing ones in, and I've put all but one of the dwarf beans in because I thought I would I would show you. Now these ones are some dwarf French beans. I think they're Blue Lake that I planted. So I, I think I planted about four in here and three have come up. Now what I'm not, I'm not going to separate these. I'm just going to grow them together in a clump and they will be absolutely fine. So you can see, hopefully you can see, that I've put the rest out and some are a bit curly but they seem to be settling in. These ones have been in for a couple of days. So do it on a calm day. If it gets really windy, you may well find that the leaves get a bit scorched because the wind does weird things. The wind will scorch leaves and make some leaves either go sort of a whitey color or sometimes they'll go sort of black on the outside. We had a load of wind uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. It was really quite stormy and the leaves on my lemon balm have gone all black around the outside. But don't worry, those have fallen off and new ones have come. So don't worry if this happens to your beans. As long as the growing shoot, the main tip growing shoot is fine, then they'll be all right. So let's get the last bean in the ground and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to put the bean here 
Now I have spaced my beans, I suppose about six inches apart from each other, they'll be fine. Sometimes with the dwarf ones, they do say you don't need to stake them, but sometimes you do. So see how they get on. If they suddenly fall over and look like they're about to fall over, then you can always put like a three inch or, a, sorry, a three foot or a four foot stake in. But I don't usually. So what I'm going to do is I will dig a hole nice deep hole now you want the hole to be a little bit deeper than the pot itself just like that just remove the label I will put it back now I know it's quite difficult to support three but hopefully you'll be able to do it squeeze the pot off and you can see that there's loads of lovely roots there so I'm going to pop it straight in the hole and then I will just backfill around and firm it in and that's that one done I will put the label back put it the right way around because the other side of the label says Spanish trombone it's definitely not that so there we go although I do have my nice big thing that says French beans so I do like these they're lovely so that's all my beans in. What I will do is I will give these a really good water. If you have an issue with slugs and snails, then you'll need to protect them from the slugs and snails. But once they get to a certain size, they should be okay. So that's all of those in. Let's move on to the sweet corn. I've got the sweet corn here and I've got one more to put in. <clears throat> and I've also got a courgette here as well. Now, some people do what they call the three sisters. So you have the sweet corn, you have a bean growing up your sweet corn, and then you have pumpkin squashes, courgettes, or your cucurbits growing round them, and they do really, really well. But I've got my beans over there, as you've just seen, so I'm only doing two sisters. Now, sweet corn should be grown in a block, not in a one straight line. So I have got 15 plants here, I think. Oh, no, 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 so uh, 16. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, 15, 15. So I've done three by five, which is absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna show you the last one. So I've positioned them if you can do them about a foot apart from each other but if you can't then do about nine inches which is about the length of four five six seven yeah and about nine inches is about the length of my trowel so i'm going to dig a nice hole for it again these need to be planted deep because they'll get really tall and if you live in an exposed area they and they get battered by wind quite a lot then you will find that they fall over so i have grown i think i sowed about three seeds per pot all three in this one have come up i am not going to separate them they don't need to be separated so take the pot off hopefully you can see there's loads of roots there they're ready to come out and go out into the soil so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the hole nice and deep they're about an inch and a half down okay deeper than they were in the pot and then I will just fill in round these and push down the, the, the soil nice and firmly and then whilst we're here I will oops so I will plant out my courgette now if you have the space somebody said to me how far about um, do you I'm gonna move this because I'm gonna end up damaging myself oh there we go how far apart, apart, apart how far apart do you or should you plant your pumpkins and you should really do about a meter or three feet apart from each other but to be honest with you who has that amount of room they'll just travel wherever so I say if you can do two feet great but if you can only manage 18 inches then that's absolutely fine they really won't mind at all what I would suggest you do 
is where you've planted one, because they do tend to travel, and when you come to water, you want to actually water where the roots are, is you put a stick if you want to. I'm not going to because I know that they're all in this area and when I empty the water from the washing machine it will just flow down and it will just go all over anyway so that's fine. So I would suggest the same if you're doing your um, courgettes as well, putting a stick in and if you can do two feet then do but a foot and a half will be fine. Mine are, a, well, about a foot and a bit but they'll all intertwine each other and they really won't mind. They're quite happy being quite cosy. So again, with the courgettes and with your marrows and with your squashes, any of those cucurbits, you need to plant them a little bit deeper than they are in their pot. So a nice hole, turn it upside down, take off the pot, and again you can hopefully you can see there's loads of lovely roots there i have actually got some flowers that are starting to form but i won't feed these until the flowers start to open so pop it in the hole fill in around it firm it in and then that one's done. Now I've got one other thing in this bed over here in the cage that I need to show you. In this cage here, which I've got a load of brassicas, I've also planted some chicory. Now it's the first time I've ever planted chicory and um, it seems to be growing really quite well. So I've planted them all out, apart from one which I wanted to show you. So now it's most probably about five to six inches tall and it's ready to go outside. Now, I hope you can see these brassicas. These guys have only been in since two weeks when I last, when I did the mid-May update. And they have grown so much in the last two weeks. It's absolutely brilliant, I'm so chuffed. So, let's get this chicory in. Now, I've positioned these plants, I suppose about six inches apart from each other and I'm just going to dig a nice hole. And again, you want the hole a little bit deeper than the pot here. You can see the other ones in here. I put these in a few days ago and they're settled quite well. There's one there that just needs a little bit more water. It, it's been so hot here. And when it's not been hot, hot, it's been really windy. So the wind dries out everything as well. So I'll just take the pot off. Oh, and there are the roots of my little chicory. It's doing very well. So I will pop him in the hole. And again, you can't actually see that. Let me just move it forward so you can see, which is such a shame. So there we go. Oh, is the camera in the way? Oh, it is, isn't it? Let's move around here and then hopefully you'll be able to see. There he is. Okay, that's better. So I've popped him in his hole and I just moved the soil back around, firmed it in, and that's him all sorted. All I will do with everything is I will give it a really, really good water. One of these beans isn't curling, it should do. You may well find that you have to um, encourage your beans to actually grow up a pole and you might have to just get a little bit of string just to tie them there. Once they've got the idea, then they'll go up. But sometimes you need to just give them a little bit. They're like children. You have to show them what to do um, first. So <laughs> I've got three that don't want to grow up yet but I will just tie those in very very loosely and then once they get the idea and then they'll they'll work their way up but I, everything needs a good water if you need to protect from slugs and snails whatever way suits you best I I'm very lucky I don't actually have to because they're in these raised beds and these raised beds are really rough and slugs and snails don't like coming up these because they're really rough and they hurt their little feet so um, Apart from a few strawberry, uh, sorry, a few tomato plants that I just need to uh, pop in. And I've got some, oh, 
artichokes here, globe artichokes, which I sowed from seed. They've been bashed a bit by the wind, but um, I just need to put those in because I've got a bed over there and it's just got a few holes in. So all I'm going to do with these is again, dig a nice big hole, slightly deeper than the pot and put it in and firm them in. So it's tomatoes and those and a few flowers. And then I think everything's in, which is a little bit scary. Um, so yes. Mm. And then it's just a case of weed, water, weed, water, and then harvest, 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 which will be great. So I, I still need to tidy out and sort out the fruit patch, which especially the goji berry has just gone completely ballistic. Um, and the strawberries are getting, uh, there's loads of strawberries there, they're green. So um, I need to train the raspberries. So that's the job for, I don't know, tomorrow? I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> It may be the case that I don't actually get it done, but anyway, so that's how everything's going in here. Once frost has gone from your area, all your tender crops can go out, so it's just a case of mass planting, but it's all very exciting. Anyway, I hope you found that useful, and I hope you've enjoyed what I've shown you. I hope you're having a lovely time in your garden or on your allotment or wherever you garden, so stay safe. Keep well and look after yourselves and I will see you soon. Bye bye.